So here's day one of the air source heat pump install. So these are the 600 by 300 concrete slabs that I'm using for the base. Instead of using one big slab which is really heavy, I use two smaller slabs, just level them across and then they'll have the rubber feet standing on them supporting the air source heat pump. Which is a thermosec unit, 12 kilowatt, slightly oversized I think for a 2,500 gallon pond but um, decided to go for this one. That should do the job. And I've connected that up with inch and a half pipe work. Down the back with some rubber flexible connections on there just to provide a bit of um, vibration damping and to make it easier to disconnect and run that down through into the cabin which is now trash through the back wall and all the way across and through into the filter house it's about a seven meter run so it's quite a long way to go but it was the only place where i've got space to put an air source heat pump so i'll have to insulate all this to cut down on heat losses i've got some armor flex lagging to do that and then that comes through here I've got two pipes coming through there's not a lot of space for actually getting the pipe work out either but this is my current uh, set up to uh, an electro heater and what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting the pipe here turning that elbow across going through that hole there and then this one uh, we'll cut this elbow out replace this piece of pipe and that will go underneath here up the back and then out through the bottom hole there with just a couple of valves here to isolate it. Um, I'll be able to balance the bypass either by speeding up the pump, which is a Vario 20,000, or by using this valve here, which I use to um, bypass the water through the electro heater. So what it will do is it will go through the air source heat pump first, then come back through the pipe work, through where the electro is as a backup, and then back out to the pond. So that's where the piece of pipe will be replaced and it will now run across underneath that connection and up and then the top part of that will go across there so the water will run down through back to the air source heat pump back from there into this connection going through the electro heater which I'll leave in place as back up and then back up to the main return to the pond. So the base of this pump is just a couple of 600 by 300 concrete slabs set in some uh, concrete themselves to level them up and then the uh, rubber anti-vibration damping feet and they're available separately from a, a channel supplier they're about £15 each just to stand the heater up off the deck get it clear of any snow and um, provide some anti-vibration damping So here's where I've made off the ends for the cable that's connecting up to the 12 kilowatt heater. It requires a 2.5mm squared cable connection. It's quite heavy duty but that's because uh, uh, it can have quite a high start-up current. Um, I've made these connections off with some fork spade connectors that I've crimped but also pulled the insulation sleeves back so that I could solder the connections in as well just to make them a bit more secure so they don't pull out. Uh, that will go into the air source heat pump, be clamped up, and then I'll run that back into the cabin where I'm going to connect it up with a um, few switch spur. Um, you can use a plug with these, even though it's a two and a half mil cable, you can plug these in, but um, with it being a, a high load occasionally, um, I prefer to have it hardwired to a few spur, few switch unit. 
We'll get that run in and then get it wired up. Okay, so I've connected up the electrics using those Fox Peg connectors, crimped it and clamped it inside, and then uh, fixed this uh, HORN, HO7RN F cable to the side of the cabin with some number five cable cleats. There's where I made the connections. That pipe used to go straight there into the electro now diverts, goes out to the air source heat pump, comes back there and then back through and connects into the main return going back to the pond there. And this valve here that I've got that I used to have balancing the flow through the electro now balances the flow through the air source heat pump and the electro so I can use that valve there to balance the flow and if I decide not to use it in winter and disconnect it I can just turn these two valves off here it means there's not very much of a dead leg and then um, drain it down that's it all up and running pumps running just need to fire the unit up now and uh, see what the settings are on it so the air source heat pump's up and running now. It's really quiet actually, you can't really hear it until you get up to a lock about a meter away from it. That's standing right in front of it. And it's, you can just about hear the noise from the fan but you can't really hear anything else. Currently the water's coming in at 18C and going out at 20 seems to be okay and I've got it set for 19 at the moment because it's only at 18 so I'll bring it up a degree every day or so until I get it where I want it it's really quiet a lot quieter than I thought it was going to be So the air source heat pump's all up and running, doing very well. It's got the pond up to it's up to about 21 and a half now. Shut off again. There's the pipes all lagged with armor flex. There are lots of things that I'm good at, but lagging is not one of them. Probably the world's worst lagger. So we're getting here right through these joints are just taped up because they're on the inside. Don't need to be glued up like the outside joints do. So this is the spur I put in off the ring main for the air source heat pump. Because uh, it's two and a half mil cable, it's a bit bulky to put in the plug, so I've connected that direct up to this. Uh, I did have it next door, but I decided to put it in here because I wanted to put a energy monitor on there. This is a Sonoff Wi-Fi energy monitor so that it will track the usage during the day and night as well as give a total readout there of kilowatt hours and the watts when it's running. Plus it's uh, connected by Wi-Fi to an app on my phone. So I can work out how much it's using. 